Hello, my loves. Welcome back to Bahati Life Podcast and Bahati Life YouTube channel because I'm going to be showing up here with the podcast this week because my routine is a little different this week. Uh, it is Labor Day weekend, a longer weekend here in the United States. We are honoring those who are in service through the military, past, present, and future. So before I even dive into this week's transits, I do want to give a heartfelt shout out to those who in the past have been in the military, currently serving in the military, those who are deciding to serve in the military in the future, and also those families involved. I am sending you guys all of my love, peace, and protection today and every day. I too am uh, a product of military family. I know it can be weird. I feel like my experiences um, that were odd, I guess, and my I understand the difficulties, but I haven't lived all of it because of the military and the military's influence within my own life. But I understand how complex and so much of a sacrifice that it can be, you know, and what is regular, like what is normal for us, you know, so I, I totally get it. Oh my goodness, you guys, before we dive into this week's video, I do want to say I'm feeling a little under the weather. So please be gracious with me. I'm going to be gracious with myself and kind to myself. But I did want to make sure that I did not drop the ball on delivering these messages over to you guys and delivering the astrological changes that are happening because number one, I feel like this is why I'm not feeling 100% today. So I can imagine that some of you guys might be feeling the same thing as well. And number two, I want to make sure that I'm staying as close to my routine as possible, even if I'm not feeling 100%, even if there's a holiday or, or whatever the case is. So I am factoring in rest as I've learned to do, but I do want to say that I don't feel my 100% self today, but I will feel better, okay? I will feel better. The next disclaimer that I want to share is I wanted to break this week down in bullet points. That way you know what to expect from this podcast. And this is specifically for my like-minded souls and spirits out there that like to take notes when we're talking about these astrological transits. That way you're not surprised by anything that would happen this week and the weeks to come. There are so many changes that are happening in the cosmic skies right now that I don't think that I don't want any of anyone to be surprised by anything and when they occur I don't want you to be like why is this happening I want you to look down at your list and be able to check it off for that reason I want to start off with a few bullet points that way you know what to expect from this podcast but also what you can expect from this week and the weeks to come because these energies are going to bleed over into the next three weeks and and then some the first transit that's really standing out to me, you guys, is the fact that Venus is going to be entering into the sign of Virgo today. Well, it's September 5th is the time that is I'm filming. The second thing that's standing out to me is Mercury is going to go retrograde in the sign of Libra on September 9th. The third thing that's standing out to me is the full moon that's happening in the sign of Pisces on September 10th. And the fourth final thing that I'm just like, oh my goodness, is the sun trine Uranus, who is currently retrograde transit, that's happening on September 11th. Now, I don't feel like you really need to have a full grasp of astrology in order for you to understand like how kind of wonky and crazy this all might be. But if you do or you don't, I there is this week is going to be uh, I don't want to say like topsy-turvy, but it has a potential to bring a lot of topsy-turvy energy and there's a lot of grace and a lot of flexibility and a lot of patience that is going to be required because of those transits. So those are the four main things that we're going to be talking about this week. I also will be referring to my 2022 Astro, the complete um, astrology guide for 2022, my ebook, um, which by the way, this week I was talking a lot about um, taking like spiritual baths, cleansing your energies, doing energy work, doing detoxes. These are some things that I really feel are going to be a key. Not only did I feel this when I was writing the, the ebook guide, but I'm feeling it now as I'm talking to you guys. I feel that with 
Mercury retrograde. And I also feel like with um, the full moon in Pisces, there is going to be a surge of information, thoughts, feelings, revelations that can come bubbling up from the surface that your bodies, your mind, soul, um, your mind, soul, heart, and spiritual bodies are going to be processing because I truly believe that our bodies are so connected to the stars. We're so connected to the energy of the stars. So what's happening up there, we're going to feel it down here. And as we have Mercury, right, who's currently in the sign of Libra, as he's going to start backtracking and reconsidering and wanting to reconcile and wanting to fix and wanting to rebuild and wanting to break down so that they could there's reconnection in the sign of Libra that wants to um ex, I don't want to well exalt harmony exalt relationships ex, and and bring things into alignment and bring things together this is going to bring not only revelations within yourself but revelations in the people that are around you these are connections that we've said goodbye to. These are conversations that we've had in the past that we may not have a complete resolution with or we haven't really accepted it yet. There's certain things that maybe certain chapters that have been left open-ended and haven't been completely closed. I would not be surprised if, again, certain people of the past, and we know this with Mercury Retrograde, but Yes, with Mercury retrograde, but with all these other planets, Pluto, Saturn, Neptune, Jupiter, Uranus retrograde, all of these major planets are retrograde at the time that Mercury is going to go retrograde. And basically, the revelations and the breakdowns that have already been occurring the months before are going to start bubbling up to the surface. They're going to start bubbling up into your mind. When they get into your mind, you start to stew in them. You start to think about them and then you blurt it out. You speak about it. You talk about it. You you might have some, some conversation that is that you've been holding on to that now finally takes place, that now finally takes hold or it takes a hold of you. So these are things that, again, Mercury retrograde can be a bit of a doozy all by itself, but it's not just this planet that is impacting us in the weeks to come. It's all of the months that have occurred already and all of these other major planets that have been retrograde that have been trying to resolve certain issues, that have been trying to break down people's egos, that have been trying to break down certain parts of your body or your health that are not healthy, are not thriving, and now all of a sudden you have to then reach out to that doctor, talk to that person, communicate, resolve this, fix this in order to harmonize and align and bring things together so that they can work together, so that they can um, rely on each other, so that this can this connection can build, so that these pieces of the body are working cohesively together. These are things that it depends on your chart. It depends on where these planets are transiting is where you're going to see these energies. But I do want to say in the most long-winded way possible that the Mercury retrograde influence that we're going to be feeling starting the night, well now, but into the ninth and the weeks to come is more than just Mercury retrograde. It's again, all of these major planets. It's the breakdown of generational curses. It's the breakdown of big business. It's the breakdown of resources. It's the breakdown of availability. It's the breakdown of our faith in humanity, our faith in the universe, our faith in each other, our faith in ourselves, our faith in a higher power. It's our ability to find the motivation to put yourself out there, to try again, to put effort in, to start a new project. It's our the resources that are available to us. Is there still resources available? Or are we collapsing under the weight of stretching ourselves as far as we can go in order to maintain, you know, ends meet, in order to make ends meet, in order to put food on the table, food in the mouth of your children? Those are things that have been seriously that people have been dealing with. Collectively, we've been dealing with just in different ways. Okay, so Mercury retrograde is not always and doesn't have to be something that is negative. It is not a rush to the finish line to 
fix things and get things situated, this planet will do that for you. It is always in your highest and greatest good and best interest to try your best to, during these retrograde stages and retrograde phases, to work with these energies as they bring information up to the surface for you. It's not, you know, I, I feel like with retrogrades, because the energy is pulling in, it's your, um, I don't say obligation, but it's a time for you to learn how to tap deeper into feminine energy. I've been getting a lot of questions lately, just how do you balance feminine masculine energies within yourself? This retrograde stage and this retrograde cycle is going to be a perfect example. When we have the retrograde phase happening, we are going to then tap into feminine energy. This is when we sit back and we watch what comes up to us. We watch what breaks down. We are receptive to what is happening. And then masculine energy, then we move into action. Then there's a call to action. Then we fix it. If we are too hyper-focused on these planets when they're pulling within, you're going to find yourself scrambling you're going to find yourself stressed out you're going to find yourself pressed you're going to miss the blessing of this moment which is very internally seeking it's very receptive it's very falling back and waiting and resting and watching and seeing and then reacting okay and there are going to be moments where others around us are going to be in their masculine energy where they're going to feel like okay I can't let this slip I can't let this slide by I have to react I have to say this I have to reach out and let that then that's when you react to what they're saying and what they're doing I hope this makes sense you guys and I I try to do my best to break it down as simple as possible um in a way that everybody can understand and I'm very Thorough, thorough in my explanations it's hard for me to kind of shorten it but I do hope that what I'm saying is resonating with you I do hope that I'm doing it I'm explaining it in a way that makes the most sense to you right now and that is helpful to you that is my intention is that what the information that we're sharing now that it be helpful to you and that you are able to receive it and that it doesn't make you panic I've never looked at these planets and started to panic I I feel like they arrive right on time there's random but there's this thing that's happening in our in our world right now literally our entire world with Uranus and Taurus and with Pluto transiting Capricorn and Saturn transiting Aquarius these are transits that have been showing that our planet Earth has been suffering for a long time because of the violation of her resources, usually because of biz- big business, usually because our priorities and our um, rules and routines and rituals and structure for how we pull fr- pull our resources and how we abuse them, especially for monetary value, how now they're catching up with us. And it's like we'll see about these lakes and big bodies of ocean like big bodies of water that are evaporating at record speed right and people instead of our I don't want anybody to panic but instead of people kind of seeing it for what they from what it is they're like oh god this is so exciting like look at the things that we're discovering there's all this information about the discovery but I don't feel like there's enough conversation about okay, why are we discovering this? Like, this is a problem. This is a really big problem. And the reason why there's this level of delusion and distraction is because of Neptune transiting Pisces that keeps this cloud over our eyes so that even when, I don't want to say the worst is happening, but when there's big, huge breakdowns and there's huge impacts in humanity and our resources and our earth, somehow social media... Um, and here with uh, Saturn transiting Aquarius, somehow they're just like, oh, yeah, but look what we're finding. It's just like, are you fucking kidding me? The fact that that's what you're focusing on. But the part of me, the reason why I'm saying this is because, number one, it's happening. It's in the charts. But number two, it's happening right on time. And if I wasn't so grounded in my faith and my belief in astrology and I'm watching this information, I'm watching this news, I would probably go start dri- being driven crazy 
being like, why is the world focusing on like, oh my God, we found Stonehenge, like a second Stonehenge over here, which it, don't get me wrong, that's cool, as, that's cool as hell. But why is this happening? It's because our water resources are drying up because we have violated our planet. She is out of balance. She is out of whack. And the truth is, is that I have trust and faith that in astrology enough that these transits and this evaporation and this exhausting of resources, which is something I've been talking about years before when when Uranus actually moved into Taurus. I'm like, okay, buckle up. Here we go. When that started happening, I, I, I understood that this was happening right on time. And I can also see within the chart that there is going to be this new, uh, if you guys hear any snoring or um, breathing, heavy hits Franklin. He's, he's on my lap right now. He's very affectionate today. Um, and he's also, he's busy. He's just kind of licking his paws. So if you hear that noise, it's just him just busy, self-soothing and grooming. He's so cute. But um, basically what I'm trying to say is that it, all of this is happening right on time and that can only mean that the next thing that's going to be made available is this leader, again, or, or lead, leaders, more than one, Saturn retrograde through the sign of Aquarius, is going to break down and rebuild leadership that is concerned about the future of humanity. Big time, the future of humanity. Why? Because Aquarius rules the future and it also rules humanity. How we're taking care of ourselves and what that's going to look like. And we just have to kind of continue to... What was that noise? Did you hear that? Oh, guys, I'm sorry. Nova's sick too. What? This is another thing that's not making me feel good lately today. I'm hoping that it's not um, something more serious but we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see. So if you guys can send good energy to her. Um, I'm doing the best I can today, but I'm telling you I'm, I'm not feeling 100%. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So Pluto's Pluto transiting through the final degrees of Capricorn is... Now, and now that Pluto is retrograde, this is the breakdown of our business, the breakdown, the final fucking breakdown, the final countdown to be like, okay, what are we going to do? And instead of us feeling panicked by this, instead of us being like trying to save the world, it's more about tapping into collective consciousness and realizing that timing is going to play out and divine timing is always in the works. Divine timing is always showing up and will show up. And it will show up here in this in this in this event. So I'm saying all this to say, right? And I kind of went off on a little tangent there, but I'm saying all this to say that looking at the astrological charts, everything is happening right on time. These transits are happening big picture on the global level and the largest global level that we can imagine. Like our our comfortability and our ability to survive here on planet Earth. But it's also, not only are these transits happening in that grand scale, but they're also happening in the world within us. Each one of you guys is like a little solar system of all the planets that are moving and stirring within you. And where are you thriving? Where are you surviving? Where has there been a violation? Where do your needs need to be met? What chapters in your life need to be closed what chapters in your life have you not have have had a resolve with a a cooling a calming an acceptance and I really want to give you guys and as I'm saying this to you I'm also saying it to myself and to my angels and my guides who sit with me and and give me the strength to do these you know these readings with you guys so often but you know where can we Invite in healing, rest, rebuildation. That's what I'm going to call it. The rebuildation of whatever it is that has broken down, that has fallen. Where can we become better versions of ourselves? Where's Where within us can we find <clears throat> the opportunity to pull within us from a space of higher love, a higher vibration, clarity, in order to give our gifts to the collective, in order to give our gifts to the people around us, people that we know, and also to strangers. 
Mercury retrograde is going to be, from what I can feel and what I can tell and what I can sense, the biggest blessing because I feel like it's going to be another key, another opportunity for humanity and people individually to come together for love, to help each other, to say to each other and to themselves, how can I be there for you? This is where you can be there for me. Ask me how you can be there for me as well. How can I show up for you? Ask me how you can show up for me. Let me show up for you. Let me show you how to love me. I need your help. I want to help you. This is what's happening within these charts this week and during these retrogrades. That is going to be the biggest blessing. Venus entering into the sign of Virgo is going to help us to process this mindset. It's going to help us to tap into these energies. Venus rules what we're attracted to. It, show, it rules how we are, can express our loves. And it rules what is important and valuable to us as far as aesthetics and things that we can put our hands on tangible. And when Venus enters in the sign of Virgo, Virgo says, I do want to be of value to you. I do want to be of service. You are something that is priceless in, in, within my life. I need you. I need this. This is what I need to be healthy in this connection. This is where I need to be healthy within my job. This is where I need to be healthy within my my purpose, within my home. This is the hygiene. This is the routine that I'm going to need in order to maintain, in order to become and feel my highest and best version. I have to put on my mask first before I put on yours. Help me to help you and help me right and you help you the full moon in pisces that's happening on september 10th is going to also be largely revealing of imbalance it has to be it's going to be with the sun sitting in the sign of virgo these this is information that and conclusions that we've already come come to like they're they're conclusions that we've already arrived to there's certain things that we've understood about ourselves about our jobs about our world about our health our mental health our state of being our relationships revelations that we now understand we've taken the time to process it we're halfway there and when the full moon occurs when the moon literally positions itself to be directly opposite that revelation then the skies open up the 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 the, the planets lighten up and then they say okay now that i know this i need to be intuitively and in, and psychic psychically and divinely led to the solution to the outcome to the conclusion that is best for me you all of us and in, including humanity Pisces rules our intuition it, it rules our vibration it rules our our where how we're divine divinely guided what we're feeling and those are things that we cannot force fake we can't put them off it's clear as day even if you logically try to tell yourself something other than what it is that you're feeling your intuition your gut instinct will tell you that you're lying to yourself and that you're wrong each one of us has a different path with the north node falling in the sign of taurus you are being guided not only during the full moon but at, at the next few weeks of our lives you're being guided into new values into things that are have greater importance in order for this to happen there has to be uh, and there is occurring the breaking down of what we thought and what we believed was already important to us priorities start to shift how we move starts to shift how we show up for others starts to shift the way that we're taking care of certain things starts to shift because it's being broken down when we start not having enough, that's when we start realizing what is what we need. Like what exactly is it that we need? Not only to feel happy, but in order to level up, in order to thrive, in order to do well, in order, we only have one life on this earth. What are we doing with that? Who are we spending that time with? And how are we spending that time? And how can we help humanity 
because she needs us now more than ever. I mean, she been need us, but like now it's it's like red zone, you know. Um, I want to just quickly pause really quickly and say that I'm, I am once again setting the intention. It's always my concern and I always like pray and set intention before I'd start, you know, going on the podcast that the messages that I share, I do want to make sure that they are inspiring you guys and empowering you guys and not breaking you down in any way, shape or form. I want to be someone that the world can rely on when it comes to giving you clarity into these situations and empowering you through them. So I want to pause really quickly and say that these are difficult transits that we're living through. I was just joking with someone the other day, a really interesting connection about, um, you know, the word unprecedented. They just kept saying it, unprecedented times, unprecedented times. And as much as that word is so overused, it's, it's kind of the truth. Once again in history, we're living through really unique times that determine our, our future here on earth, our future in our relationships, our future in our purpose. Where are we going? Where are we headed? And this is not something that while we're talking through it, I don't want you guys to feel anxious I don't want you guys to feel unstable in this unstable ground. I want you guys to constantly question the truth. And I want you guys to search for the truth. And I want you guys to set your foundation in something that is firmer than what's collapsing around us. Because it's going to be up to us, every single one of us individually, in order to rebuild. And it starts with you asking yourself, why am I really here? What do I need while I'm here? Not only, again, like on a surface level or basic needs, but also spiritually. This means that you have to be happy and healthy. This means that you have to be fulfilled. This means that we stop chasing things that don't want us, are not a vibrational match to us, especially now that Mercury is retrograde in the sign of Libra. These energies are going to show up more now than ever. Some of you guys are so focused on the illusion of something that it's not actually there. And when you're watching it break down, you yourself are breaking down. And you yourself, your faith is being questioned. You're you're questioning your faith. And I myself do it because you're like, I'm watching this break down. This is what I believed and this is what I thought was going to save me. And this is what I thought was going to make the difference and then when you watch it break down and it's not the case and you're just like okay well what the hell is the truth and this is where everything gets stripped back and divine intervention steps forward and divine guidance will lead you you're going to see things that are very similar to what it is that you are aligning with and that you have already aligned with This is your new reality and this is showing you what is worth it and of value to you. But don't get caught on the illusion of what it looks like right now. Don't get stuck on or resist change. Don't get stuck on the change. Uh Uh-oh, here comes Franklin with his coughs. (laughs) I hope you guys can hear (laughs) me. I hope you guys can hear his little snorts. Honestly, Franklin guinea pig noises are literally the best things ever. It's like the cutest little thing. So I hope you guys can hear it. Anybody who meets Franklin and gets to hear his guinea pig noises walks away a better person. Because they're just just like so cute. (sighs) All right. I'm going to shuffle from the Lennerman deck. Oh, yeah, wow. Only because that's what's right in front of me. Okay. There's a heightened message of with birds right now, clearly. We have literally birds and the owls showing up, 12 and 12. This is about chitter-chatter. This is about um, 
being able to see in the dark, meaning like regardless of where you're at in your life right now, regardless of what others are saying, because the birds in the Lennerman represents chitter chatter, gossip, information being shared, kind of chaos, even anxiety, regardless of what it is that's going on in your head, mind, the world, um, social media, news outlets. It's your ability to kind of navigate literally because we have the maze here and we also have the book. Navigate through this truth and navigate towards your own truth. I understand that for a lot of you guys, you might be, I don't know why this keeps coming up, but addiction, dealing with certain things. For some of you guys, you're like, oh, I'm not addicted to anything because I'm not, I don't drink alcohol in excess. I don't, I have a healthy relationship with food. I have a healthy relationship with drugs or I don't take drugs or I don't partake or I'm not codependent on any relationships sometimes this addiction is not so much those things that we are fully aware of or that we normally know them to be sometimes addiction is your hyper focus on okay in order for me to feel good this 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 has to happen it's like this addiction to this mentality or this thought pattern or this belief that ultimately ends up not serving you right so it ends up not allowing you to be flexible because you're so caught in the web of what it should be or what it is or what you can't escape from for every one of us it's different addiction keeps coming up again and again and again in the readings not only here on the podcast but also when I'm um, pulling charts and also shuffling cards so I do want to give you guys a little moment a little journaling activity for those of you guys that partake in journaling and self-reflection or maybe even might be navigating through therapy what are you navigating through right now when it comes to um what are you addicted to what is it that's hard for you to let go of and is this belief does it serve you and what would happen if you let go of it what would happen if you starved it what would happen if you replaced it with something a belief system or a, a more help a, a, a healthier coping mechanism what would happen if you replaced it with something else is it the chain that fre- change that freaks you out? Are you comfortable with change? What are you so stuck on that this thing is for you, but you're stuck on the wrong thing? So it's actually blocking, you know, the actual blessing because you found the mirror of it or you found something similar to it. Let go of that which you are toxically attached to. The owl card showing up is saying like, we're going to give you the strength this week to be able to see it, to hear it, to know it, to understand it. Mercury rules our ability to process information and then articulate it. So and or what do you have to do in order to gain that level of knowledge, in order to gain that level of awareness? Journal, talk about it, connect. And if you have to disconnect from the world in order to better, to find deeper understanding within yourself, man, do it, do it. All right, my loves, that is a lot. And I really do hope that this has been helpful for you. I hope that... It has, that you understand where it is that I'm coming from, that you understand the charts, you understand the transits. I'm more than happy to answer uh, specific questions about these transits that benefit the collective good and not individual transits within your chart. However, I'm not opposed to sometimes being called and led to answer certain specific questions within the comments or within emails or within Twitter. So shoot your shot, you know, shoot your shot. Um, If you're sending emails or anything like that, please be respectful. I also have, just for full disclosure, I have a kind of like stalkerish population. I feel like I have to say to those stalker-ass energies, listen, oh my God, like just even saying this just bothers me so much, but like I have zero interest. I've never had any interest in anyone on my Instagram, sexually, attraction, anything like that. If you at any point are someone who feels like we have a romantic future or a romantic present, you are wrong. You are wrong and you're delusional. Um, I have to say this because it's just getting progressively worse. It's so invasive. There's nothing that I have been able to do so far to be able to uh crush these energies it's like the more that I come on and share my light the more the more that they try to convince and show up in all the many different ways you are exhausting yourself and you're making yourself sick I don't see it as much as you think that I do because I literally have people who read my emails for me and they see it and they don't pass the message along so if you feel like you're being 
like your persistence is paying off. It's not. And the fact that I'm addressing it right now is because I can minimally just feel it in the the uh, the outskirts. I can feel you guys like those stalkerish stalkerish energies, like um at the 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 gates. It kind of gives me like, do you guys remember The Walking Dead, where there is like you could hear like the zombies kind of like snarling in the background, but for the most part, you're kind of living your life and you're not checking all those zombies. That's what this energy is giving to those of you guys who have not accepted the fact that years ago, months ago, when you would try and turn an advance into like a that, you know, like you like this is an opportunity for us to romantically connect. You're wrong. So when I'm saying to the world right now that shoot your shot as far as let's talk about astrology it is strictly 1,000% going to be astrology. Those are the only emails that are going to get through to me that I will entertain and the only comments that I will entertain. Any, and I, I want to build a community with those people who have good intentions. I do not want to add fuel to the fire to those of you guys, the very few that are obsessed and delusional in relationships that do not exist and that I have never had any interest in pursuing or being open to. There's not enough magic in the world that you can do in order to open a door in my life. I am strongly spiritually protected. And if anything, you're making your sick, you're making yourself sick trying to jump over and leap over the hurdles in order to get to me or gain my attention, period. Now, I understand that for the rest of you guys – Forgive me for saying this disclaimer, but it's just, you know, part of the course, I guess. I just didn't, I want to have conversations with those that is that I actually want to have conversations with. And I want to be able to help those and talk astrology with those that are actually have good intentions versus, again, add fuel to the fire of those that are just like, okay, now's my opportunity. It's not, it's not like you literally are blocked and constantly getting sent to the trash inbox okay we don't even see your emails and even if one got through it's going to not get through to me so for your own sake and well-being move forward with your life and and I wish you the best of course but you're 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 not welcome here your energy is not welcome here I say that with love and light I hope that's another thing too that I hope you guys understand um that I'm not trying to be mean I'm just trying to be direct and forward with things that this path has has brought in okay so I'm, I'm hoping that you understand where it is that I'm coming from and I'm not coming across like Queen of Swords reversed. If you know, you know. All right, you guys. I'm sending you guys all of my love. I am looking forward to your emails, twi- uh, tweets on the Twitter, and social medias and comments, okay? I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. You were created to live a life of magic, abundance, love, and blessing all of which will be up to you to call into your life with perfect divine timing. Mahati Life Apothecary is the magical home of Jessica Alexandria, where you will find a wide variety of mystical items to help you to manifest your heart's truest desires, as well as tools to help you tap into your unlimited spiritual potential. Browse the online apothecary and find hand-fixed candles to magnetize your intentions towards you, You'll find thyme and star-soaked conjure oils charged to anoint your petitions, your body, and personal magical items. You'll also find the highest quality of herbs for creating your own potions and concoctions, and even reserve time and space with Jessica Alexandria herself, who will work with you to create something special and truly yours. Each item found within the apothecary are created with intention in alignment with the movement of the stars to make them even more powerful totems to bring into your own sacred space. Visit BahadiLife.com to browse the apothecary and don't forget to follow Jessica on Instagram at BahadiLife where she posts daily messages to uplift, inspire, empower, and to remind you of your magical potential along your magical journey. Blessings to each and every one of you. I'll see you there.